Yeah, get a load of that solder job, boys. <laughs> or men. Forgive me for calling you boys. To me, that's just not how it's done. You give that thing a little bit of a wrap, and then you solder it. That's Chinatown for you. Oh, so sorry, so sorry. Try to get a zoom on this thing. That, my friends, is unacceptable. By the time I got this thing back together again, it probably would have failed once more. Didn't even hook this other terminal up. This side here. It's just in there. It keeps falling out on me. There you have it. So if you're ever building something that's important that just absolutely cannot fail, do not use Chinese crap. And if you do, go through and resolder everything. You kind of have to. Freaking joke. Unbelievable. I just fixed this thing. My solder joint broke when I put it back together. This is just a quick video on the topic of cheap Chinese crap. I am so fed up with Chinese manufacturing that at all costs sometimes I will avoid buying anything from China. Um, I know that there are times where you don't have a choice, where you have to buy stuff from China. But um, I've been sitting here messing with this little air compressor that's made in China. And it blew the fuse in my car. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I, I still can't get this thing to work. There may be some internal problems. I'll get back to that after I get it running again. But I noticed this cord is busted right here. And it probably shorted out, which is why it blew the fuse inside of the terminal connector. And it also blew the fuse in my car. Um, another thing that I really hate about this pump is that it has no cooling vents for the motor. Which is absolutely retarded and will ensure that planned obsolescence sees its course um, we have here is a much smaller motor and not only does it have cooling ports but it actually has a cooling fan inside there I know the lighting is very horrible in here so to design something like this especially an air compressor of all things is absolutely ridiculous now I have a old one over here that I actually put cooling ports in I put my own cooling ports in it. This thing was taped to a potato gun I built a long time ago. I took the time to drill these holes in there because it just needed it. I mean, this thing would get so hot. And that's what they're planning on. They want the thing to fry out on you and you have to go buy another one. So yeah, you may save $25 buying Chinese crap. But next time you go buy an electronic product, you might want to think about how many of those items you're going to have to buy. Same thing happened to me with the electric hair clippers. I, instead of buying the $30 American made, I went for the crap Chinese and the long run it just bit me in the behind so i've got a a g rotor pump here that i just bought obviously from china and not only is their their products a bunch of crap worthless crap made out of crap materials but they also lie to you um i bought this pump under the impression it was a gear pump this is not a gear pump this is a g rotor pump and i will take it apart and show you what i mean by that here in a second But, um, also, once again, no cooling vents. I had to cut my own cooling vents. Under no circumstances would I be running an electric motor without cooling vents. If it's a starter motor on an engine or something, then fine. If it's only going to be running for 16 seconds maximum, fine. But this thing here takes 10 minutes to air a tire up almost, maybe. Maybe not that long to top it off, but it's just unbelievable that they use plastic so cheap that this would happen. This didn't used to happen. This is a new phenomenon that's happening with a lot of Chinese products. This this little thing right here, that happened to my lamp right here also. Now I know you're not supposed to unplug outlets by pulling on the cord, but we all do it. 
And um, that still never used to happen. I, I have never seen this so much in my life lately. They're, they're using a new plastic. It's probably made out of soybeans or rice. So chemical engineering has saved them a lot of money at the expense of endangering our lives, essentially. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. And secondly, I bought this PWM from China. The only place that sells them. This is the only place that makes anything anymore because they've just completely stolen the market and now they're cranking out cheap crap. And I just want to show you the poor quality of some of these solder joints here. I mean, I don't know if you can see that. Look at those beads. That terminal right there isn't even completely enshrouded. They're not beaded correctly. You see how everything else flowed? Like you see how those two right there have a nice conical flow to them? This capacitor is just barely hanging on there. The board wasn't etched enough. Probably what they did is it's only soldered to that very minute little bit of copper that you see right there. You see that tiny speck? I bet you that the exposed area is no bigger than that. So basically this capacitor, that's this one right here, may have problems down the line. Um, the PWM knob itself is just connected by three soldering pins. And any electrical engineer who designs these things would know that this is something you do not do. Their designs are just horrible, even from an engineering standpoint. This should have had, these two holes right here, should have had secondary solder pins that connected simply to a frame to hold this knob. Because over time, these are going to crack this solder joint loose from jarring around with it. So, in addition to that, every time I buy these router speed controllers, and I'll tell you what, I bought about 15 of them, I have to take them apart and modify them to death. This one here required an entire heat sink on it because for it to actually operate at the rated capacity, it needs a heat sink on the back of it. The triac circuit just cannot handle it. They lie to you. They are flat out liars. Um, the solder joints in this thing look like they were performed by a five-year-old who was in a huge hurry. And just their rapid assembly line cranking out crap tactic, is, it's just getting to my last nerve. I'm tired of, of buying Chinese products and having to immediately refurbish them anytime you buy any electronics from china or anything you've got to get inside there and do your due diligence uh secondly the second problem with this they put a filter in the intake and the outtake on this here's one of them i don't know if you can still see it was full of crap it had flakes of metal in there from the machining process so i bought a pump had i put this onto an extremely important piece of equipment I would have had metal flakes already in there blocking one of the screens and then possibly sending debris to another component of the device I was connecting this to. So I had to take this thing apart. First of all, I removed the discharge screen. That's what you see there. Because putting a screen on the discharge of a pump is actually, it's just ridiculous. I don't understand why you would do that. To that, I do not like the shape of the brushes in this motor. I don't know what they were doing there, but um, the brushes in this motor are excessively small. Now I've taken a lot of electric motors apart in my day. And usually when they're this big, the brushes are fairly long. These ones here are very tiny. I intend to possibly hook up a secondary cooling fan to this. Um, looking at either connecting this one to it or something else. But um, basically the premise of this video is when you buy stuff from China, you might want to look into what you purchased before you just go throwing it into application. Because... There's a lot of work to be done yet on some of this crap. I, I am so fed up. If you want to know a good place to buy stuff other than China, these are the three places where you're going to get a quality product. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, we were buying can openers from China nonstop, like two, three of them a year. We bought one from, that was made in America about three years ago, and it still works just fine. Even though it's rusted a little bit, it not only opens cans better, but it has not broke like every Chinese piece of crap can opener we've ever owned. Second good place to buy products is Poland. Now, I know a lot of people think that Polish people are stupid, but that is couldn't be further from the truth. They are one of the most honorable nations alive right now. I would move to Poland in a heartbeat. Um, all that dogma about them being stupid is just absolute nonsense. They are one of the smartest races alive, and their products stand by their name. This right here, made in Poland. This is one of the most durable brands of welder you can buy. I know people have told me they've used their welder at work, which means it was used constantly. For up to 11 years. They have one that's 11 years old. You go buy one of those Hobart or Hasselhoff, Hoffman, whatever it is, piece of crap from Harbor Freight. The damn thing won't last a year before the wire feed fails on it. Um, another good place to buy products is Germany. Germany has some of the most rugged hand tools you can get. Um, 
I bought a pair of Kleins for five dollars from China. These things are absolute crap. I had to use them for work. I had to just leave them at home. They're no good. I had to break down and buy some made in America that cost thirty-five dollars. But you know what? They work. They do their job. They cut wire. These here, you damn near got to stand on it. They came with pre-dulled blades. How convenient is that? They decided that I needed a sixteenth of an inch flat spot on my cutters. That was not made for me using them. And you see that flat edge? That is a flat edge. So they don't even sharpen their, their cutting tools. This is uh, Master Force. Some Master Force stuff is made in America, but not all of it. Um, the $30 Kleins are far better. So, I mean, just the materials they're using these days are just junk. I know this video was a bit of a waste of time, but um, yeah, if you want to buy stuff from China, just count on having just purchased an absolute piece of crap that's going to fail in no time. I've used this thing three times. $50 for this piece of shit. I'm sick of it. I'm fed up with China. I'm fed up with Taiwan. I'm fed up with Japan. You see that car right there? That's like a $50,000 piece of shit sitting in my driveway. Yeah, that's my license plate. Go on ahead and sue me. Track me down and kill me. I'm not gonna bother blurring that out. I don't care. Do not ever, and I mean ever, buy an Infinity. If you do, you're gonna need about $30,000 worth of tools and a couple of years experience in working on cars because uh unless you got one of these we're getting the harmonic balancer off and uh just a wall full of tools you ain't gonna be driving that piece of shit for very long made in japan out of rice and bamboo painted to look like it's metal basically there might be a few beer cans melted down structure the engine and that but it's basically just a, a beer can car it's junk it's absolute shit I drove a Pontiac made in America for six years and only had to do some minor front end work. Had I paid someone to work on this thing for me, I'd be out about $6,000 already and I've only owned it for a couple months. It's absolute Japanese shit. So enough of me ranting. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm sure a lot of you are on the same page, but I have some quantitative proof here that their products are absolute shit and we are being fleeced. We're being ripped off with materials and, and components and devices that are absolutely designed to fail so that we got to buy another one and i'm tired of it so just a topic of conversation you know consider buying from poland from germany anywhere than a place where people are treated like shit they don't treat their employees like shit in poland only in china and japan and stuff like that are they basically slaves you're buying products made by slaves and you say oh no they're not they're paid yeah well you also got to pay to stall a horse you know how much it costs to keep a horse in a stable? No, you don't pay horses, but you still got to stable the damn things. You still got to feed them oats and carrots and weeds, whatever the hell a horse eats. I don't know. They're slaves, and these are slave-made products by slave-driving countries. And I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. All these name brands, these companies send their stuff overseas. This thing's a piece of crap. You drop that one time, and it's done. Looks like I got a rock or something stuck in there and I need to get out. So, that's what this video is about, man. Just be vigilant. Don't go buying this crap and hooking it up to something without checking it out first. I, I wish I would have got some footage of the metal filings inside this. Um, this is kind of what angered me into posting this video, was finding the metal filings inside of here. It really, really chapped my ass. And just from a design perspective, to put a filter screen on the discharge of this pump is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. If you do have metal filings being generated from the pump in here, the last place you want them to stay is in the pump. You want them out of there. You don't want them clogging up the discharge. If you have uh, componentry that's sensitive to metal debris, then you put a secondary filter in. You don't inhibit performance of the pump by putting a damn filter screen in there. Yeah, what a nice screen. Well, I'm back. I took the trouble of throwing this pump back together. Tried to fire it up. Nothing happened. I went ahead and already cut this thing off. I regret doing that now. Um... They don't even wrap the soldering wires anymore in the terminal. <coughs> they just connect it with some solder. It broke loose. I didn't know what was going on there. Just took this back apart after I had it glued up and uh, figured out what the problem was. So uh, they got me again. This joint here is probably about ready to fail too. So they don't even wrap the terminal. You're supposed to wrap the wire in that terminal and then solder it. Solder is not a mechanical connection. It's just not. So this is just 
Unbelievable. I am so disappointed in China's products anymore. I think I'm just going to tear this damn thermal thing off of here and end it. Like I said, that's just for the underwriter's laboratory crap anyway. So once that thing blows, it's done. That's just to get a UL rating on this baby. That does not kick back on after the thermal temperature is reached or uh, cooled off again. So there you go. More proof of Chinese crap products. I just fixed this thing and put it back together and it wouldn't work and I couldn't figure out why. The jerks didn't even wrap the wire in the terminal. They just touched it on there and, and hit it. They'll save every second they can. It's ridiculous. Okay, this pulsation that we're looking at here. This is why I kind of feel deceived by the company that sold me this pump. Because if this was a gear motor pump. Um, or a gear pump as you would. We wouldn't be having that pulsation. That pulsation is indicative of a G rotor at low RPM. As you can see, I'm running this thing at extremely low RPMs here. I have this elaborate setup. Because, um, this pump did not come with a cooling fan. And even if it did, I'm running it at such low RPMs that it wouldn't cool itself. I have a dual discharge on this blower to cool off the PWM as well. Because it'll get pretty hot without that blower on it. It's getting kind of late tonight, but tomorrow I'm going to fire up the FLIR-1 camera and show you just how hot that armature is getting without this blower. I had to add this blower to get this thing to work. This is the only transformer I have to run this thing, and I'm not going out and buying a transformer. I'm, I've got way too much into this as it is already. But uh, I'm a little disappointed. See, when a G-Rotor runs at, at higher RPMs, you don't really perceive the pulsation much. But I'd have oil flying out of my burner like that. So I'm going to have to be down at speeds like this. And that pulsation translates into combustion chamber. When we fire up the waste oil burner, you will see that pulsation in the, in the combustion. It will be kind of a pulsing fire. And I wanted a constant roar, which, you know, is no big deal. But I'm going to have to turn this cooling fan back on because this thing will start to heat up pretty good. It's, the problem is, is that I'm running this transformer off a triac. Now, if I turn the triac up, it doesn't really do much with the PWM hooked up. But it does pull 4 amps through my primary, which gets it way too hot. So I have a triac running the primary, which is causing a frequency alteration. So I'm no longer running at 60 hertz. And uh, I actually had this armature smoking hot during some of the preliminary testing. So that's why... We have this odd contraption hooked up here for cooling because I have to have it on there. But anyway, that's why I feel deceived by this company. If this was a gear motor, I would not be having these pulsations like this. And uh, the Chinese people like to lie to you. They're very deceptive. Um, I just don't know what to think about them anymore. I'm kind of fed up. They should have advertised the fact that this was a G rotor pump. It is not a gear motor. It's completely different. There are no gears, per se, inside of this thing. There is a planetary gear, if you will, and an eccentric lobe gear. But um, that's just kind of unacceptable for the way I wanted this thing to run. The pulsation and buffeting kind of, I feel like it messed with combustion a little bit. I wanted a constant roaring combustion, and I'm just not going to get that now. That is very low RPM. I'm going to shut this off a second. As I said, I'll fire up the Flutter 1 camera. And we'll see just how hot that armature will get at these low RPMs. This has got to be the most elaborate oil pump in the history of mankind. But you got to do what you got to do, man. I don't want the thing burning up. This is a $50 pump. As far as maximum output goes, I believe that's about 9 volts. I don't know why this uh, unit will only put out 9 volts. It's putting 19 volts into the PWM, but yet I'm only getting 9 volts out. So there is a significant voltage drop on this thing, which probably translates into a huge heat dissipation. But, um,. This thing's been running for about an hour. I just wanted to test it. See how it would do. 
and apparently it's gonna work but um, I am gonna do some footage with the Fleur one camera to show my heating problems they are kind of disappointing that I had to do all this I would rather just hook this up to a transformer and go with it I could not find a pump smaller than this to run off a small transformer that's part of the problem is that this pump is incompatible for the job it's made to run at much higher voltages and I could not find a suitable pump this was the best I could do that's another thing I found this under the heading micro gear motor pump this is not a micro gear motor this thing's almost the size of a brick they're telling me it's a micro gear motor pump so the picture on the internet deceived me I was expecting something this big that's kind of what it looked like in the picture too I mean th there was nothing to compare it to it's kind of like a McDonald's hamburger patty in reverse they show such a nice large patty in the picture then you get it and it's this tiny thin thing well they they did the opposite on me there but uh, that's where we are totally deceived once bitten twice shy definitely a neat looking oil pump I, I will agree with that there's got to be an easier way